Hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm excited to be here with you. It's Freestyle Fridays, which means that you can ask me any question you want and I will help you solve it in your business. So as you're joining the line, I just want to say hello, hello, hello. Awesome. Good morning, you guys. Well, we're doing this right now live at 6 a.m. And every Friday, I do Freestyle Fridays, which means that, you know those annoying burning questions or roadblocks that you have in your business and you just seem to not be able to get through them and it's kind of like, uh, can I, if somebody would just solve this problem for me or answer this question, then I would be able to unleash and go. So that's what Freestyle Fridays is about. It's about an opportunity for you to ask me anything about how I run my business or to tap into the wisdom inside my head on how you can run your business better so that hopefully you have a good life, right? It's important to be able to actually take a vacation and enjoy your life along along with building a business. So, okay, so let's rock and roll. Hey, Melanie Breaker, how are you? Alex Ariaga, Freestyle Fridays. Yes, yes, can you, would you say, can you freestyle dance today? Um, yes, I can, but I'm not gonna do it on Coffee with Shanda because I'm gonna answer some questions. Um, you know I love to dance, I love to salsa dance, I love to dance. Monty, you love the bow. Okay, I'm gonna tell you the honest truth. The shirt I was gonna wear broke. It's, it broke, like literally, my shirt broke that I put on it, like ripped all down the arm. And I was like, oh no, and this shirt was hanging there, and so I grabbed it and put it on. This is how complete, my husband says I'm very free in my mind, right? He's like, you're so free in your mind. Yesterday he was telling me this, like, it's just something I really, really respect about you. And, um, and this is how free I am. I hate this shirt. Like, I literally, it still has the tag on it. It literally still has the tag on it. I can't stand this shirt. It's going back. Uh, it was, it's going back. I can't stand it. But I was willing to look really funky and not cute. My earrings don't even match my bow. <laughs> I mean, it's really bad here. But thanks, Monty. I appreciate you giving me some love. Okay. So, Melanie, I love the bow. No, it's horrible. You guys are so great. I love you guys. Okay. Deidre, let's get down to business. Deidre, what tools do you use to decide the difference between knowing when you have to pull back and make space and when you're pulling back because of fear? Deidre, that's a really great uh, answer. So, okay. So, even if you re like you back up and look at that question, when do I know when to pull back when I'm either coming from fear or um, or it really is time to pull back, right? And the the way that I would answer that question is I would say that I complete whatever it is that I start. So that's like the only reason why I'd ever want to pull back is because I'm probably hitting a limit that I feel like I can't handle, um, you know, and 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 the way like. Like I hit those limits all the time. And when I hit those limits, I, I literally go back into my tool belt of leadership and I say, how could this get completed and how could it look different, right? Like I know the way that I would do it naturally, but what would be a new creative way that I could actually complete this? And sometimes it's with you, sometimes it's with other people. I'm not gonna use the word delegation here because I think that especially powerful people, they're, they're like, Oh, I understand delegation. I do it all the time. Yeah, but even when I was a manager of like, you know, a, a half a floor of people, um, and even when I was a manager of an entire nightclub in Las Vegas, I still, like I delegated, but I still worked seven days a week, right? Like I still worked seven days a week, and I did that for three years. Like my technically day off in the nightclub was Sunday and I would go in and I would do eight hours of payroll and, you know, uh, like counting up the liquor, like in liquor inventory and stuff like that with our bar, bar manager. So the bar manager did it, but I was still there working with him, right? And in the office. So notice that we have behavioral patterns that have us operate a certain way. And then there's the way that we would do it and we would handle it. So for some people, they need to learn how to just amp up their energy and amp up their leadership to actually get single focused and knock something out. Other people like you, Deidre, you might want to look at 
like, um, you know, like whether you feel the fear or not, you're going to do it anyway. And you know that, right? And so, so you're not going to stop because of fears. The only other reason why you're actually going to stop is because you somehow think you've reached your limitation um, or something's not going to work, which is, which is actually a, um, it's actually a, a stubbornness to not shift. Right, so so now let me bring it back so it's really simple. I complete everything I start, no matter what. So then what I do is instead of struggling or suffering through trying to get something done, I actually ask myself, okay, what would be the way that I think that I could get this done? Da, 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 da. And that might be like way too exhausting. And so, okay, what would be a way that maybe like Sarah Blakely would do this? Because she runs a billion dollar company and am I doing billion dollar um, activities inside my company, right? And the only reason why I picked that is because she's got four kids, she's got a husband, she's got a much bigger company than I do. She's handling more. So she's obviously doing something in her day that's completing whatever it is that she sets her vision on, right? And her leadership is strong, but she's doing it different than I am. So how would she do it? And I just start tapping into her energy and playing around with, you know, playing around with other strategies that maybe I never would have even looked at because I wasn't allow, allowing myself to step out of the box and go after it. So Deidre, I don't know if that answered your question, but what I'm trying to say is I never back down. Um, you know, Amy Amata just said to me yesterday, she sent me a, a beautiful Voxer and she said, you know what, somebody had asked her, what keeps you coaching with Shanda? Um, like year after year after year. And she said, um, first of all, Shanda's always growing. And when she grows, she teaches me how to grow. Secondly, she's unstoppable. And that's, that's her, that's her interpretation of me is that, that I'm unstoppable, which is really answering your question, Deidre. And because I'm unstoppable, she wants to stay close so that she embodies the strategies and the visions and the leadership to be unstoppable too at whatever it is that she creates. So I hope that answered your question. Okay, um, Monty, reaching out to my, my email list after the survey for the first time. Woo woo! Um, text grand email today. Text grand email today. How to approach with love and giving. I want to make, oh, like should you text? I don't know what text grand means, sorry. Um, I wanna make sure my off, I want to make offers and have fun to serve. Okay, so look at the survey, and I would actually recommend that you even take a screenshot of just the analytics of the survey so you can get different um, visuals of the survey, and you could actually write an email with a screenshot of the survey in it, sharing like what you saw in the survey and what that actually means, and like take the pressure, find like what, what is the bad news that the, that the uh, survey is showing? Right? Like what is the bad news that you're seeing? And then and then literally share that bad news, but share that bad news from the standpoint of this is normal and you don't want to be normal, you want to be this, right? And so share a couple strategies or a strategy, one strategy, which is you know the the solution or the good news to that bad problem so that they can get over it. And then ask them to answer a question and hit reply. Right, hit reply, answer this question and hit reply to this email. That will have your inbox get inundated with people engaging with you. And then what you need to do is start having a conversation with them through email marketing or just email. Don't even think the word marketing. Email, which means that um, love and serve each and individual person's needs that come in your inbox. And, um, and I know that I know that like I, I mean I can't do this strategy in my email because my emails now I have you know hundreds of thousands of emails and so but you can at your size of email you can actually hit, have them hit reply this creates a really connected email correspondence serve them two to four emails back and forth serve them I know it seems like a lot but it you know you'll actually get in you'll get connected to this person and then what you say is you know what, what's your phone number? Because I could I could do this much quicker on a five minute call versus going back and forth on email. And then they'll give you their phone number, you call them, and then you get on the phone with them and you have a conversation, okay? So that's a great way to just start. So share the survey results 
ask yourself, what is the bad news of this survey? Share the bad news, but take the pressure off so that they feel good about the bad news. And then here's the solution or a solution. And then let me give you an example. Answer this question. Hit reply to this email and answer this question. When they do that, then now you've got an engagement happening. You've got a relationship happening. Beautiful. Okay. Um, Divorce Billman, more on making offers. I always want to improve how I make offers. I loved yesterday's and I want more. Okay, so, um, so, gosh, Devorah, I need more specifics on that. I mean, the best way I could say, like, there's so many different areas I could go making offers. Like, make sure your offers are clear and they're, and they're lining up to one specific point. So one of the big mistakes I think a lot of people make when their offers fall flat is they're too general right? They're too general. They're like, like, I know you want to like, you want to cast a wide net and you want to pull in all these fish, right? Like you want to just cast this large net and bring in all these fish, right? So that you can, you can eat and you can serve people, right? But that's really not what you want to think about when you want to make an offer. Like I'm creating a new offer right now and I'm going through the same things that I go through whenever I'm learning how to make a new offer, is I'm trying to true it up to one person, right? True it up to one person. I'm not trying to, like, if you were to look at, like, not my Pace Club, but definitely my Marketing Mastery Group, you will see there's a lot of very similar people. I mean, they're a very driven community. They're very spiritual. Um, they have a high level of responsibility, um, but they're also, they're all very driven. You know what I mean? Like before they ever met me, they were like on a path to go after it, to win the game of life, to win the game of business, to win the game of freedom, right? There's a common threat. Now I have a friend of mine, I can go into her community and we joke all the time um, because we actually had to move her community out of this. Her community was like, um, Super, super spiritual, but everybody cried all the time. And there's nothing wrong with crying, right? There's nothing, that's not what I'm saying. But they cried all the time, right? And so they cried to be able to avoid doing the work. And so it was always too much. When the pressure got, got too much, their backs would go out or they would have a breakdown in their marriage or like it would be like, and then, and then they would go into, deep, deep despair around it, right? And so, Devorah, I'm getting back to your question around making offers. That comes down to the messaging that you put out there. I actually just saw, this is an old client of mine, just put out a message in her email marketing that said, let me show you how I work 12 hours a month. That's kind of actually pulling back to that old community that we worked her out of, which is you actually don't want the client that only wants to work 12 hours a month. I know we would all love that, but the truth is, is what would you do with your other like half a month? And I know you could probably come up with answers to that, but honestly, I take off a month a year and it's amazing, but it takes me forever to get back into January and it's like annoying how long it takes me to get my mojo back, right? And so I can't even imagine, like, it's, I think it's the reason why when people retire, they, they end up kind of slipping back in their health and they end up slipping back in, in depression or, or abusing alcohol or food or they get isolated and they stay in their house and get into this little tiny small world routine, right? I think that happens a lot. Because it's like my friend Kevin Hudo says, how many times can you play golf a week? Like we all think it sounds amazing, but how many times can you play golf a week? So when you're going to make an offer, my point is, make sure that you're not trying to bait and switch people. Because I know this person works more than 12 days a month, right? She just does. She works very hard. I taught her my flex calendar and her flex calendar is great but she's not working 12 days a month this month. There's no way because of what's on her plate. And so what you can be missing sometimes in your marketing is what it takes, right? And you want to attract people when you make offers based off a story or a positioning in your marketing that really attracts somebody who's willing to go through hard, right? So 
Um, I'll kind of leave it at that. I, I hope that that helps you, Devorah, tweak it a little bit more. Um, without a specific question around what you want to know about offers, it's hard for me to go exactly. I don't know where exactly you want me to go. Okay, so uh, Susan, Susan, I am going to answer your question. What is great? Uh, what is great? Your your hubby. Oh, what is great? Uh, that is great. Your hubby loves Montana. Yes, he does. I only love I only, I only love it here when it's in the summer. Love the glacier parks. When I am wealthy, believe. When I'm wealthy, I believe I plan on being somewhere warmer. I totally understand. So your vision is, is you're going to move from Montana, <laughs> and I hold that vision for you. Okay. Um, okay, Catherine, how do you get even more specific about your email list needs? Uh, I did my initial survey, but my results were broad. I'm trying to create an offer that lands better. Thank you so much. Um, so Catherine, why don't you, because you're a client of mine, why don't you screenshot your survey and post it in the group and tag me? Um, if you do it before 11 a.m., um, I will get in there and I will go take a look at it and see what I can see. Um, and then you learn the lesson of why was your survey so broad? Because you led it, right? So when you lead something, it's not that 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 it's, you probably already know this, right? But remember that this isn't a game of perfection. This is a game of getting better. And we get better by actually these moments. So I would actually ask myself, how could I have done this survey better so it was more specific? And I would rewrite it. And then I would possibly send it back out. And um, maybe you offer, maybe you offer a free giveaway for anybody who answers the survey. What about this? What if you what if you actually were honest? I think honesty converts. So you said to your email list, um, so subject line, I need your advice. People love giving advice, right? That'll get the email open. The purpose of a subject line is to do one thing. It's to get them to open the email. Just like if you walk up to a door and you knock on the door or ring the doorbell, that's not to have a conversation or to walk in the house. It's actually to get somebody to open the door. So understand marketing all has one target, right? And don't try and do too many targets with one thing in marketing. So the subject line, can I ask your advice? That'll get it open for sure. Then write, take, take your email and tweak your, own, your old email, but change the first paragraph and say, I asked for your advice on a survey a couple days ago. And unfortunately, um, my bad, the survey questions were too broad. Would you, would you do me a favor and give me and take two minutes and give me your advice on these four questions? And just make your survey four questions this time. We're just taking what we've already done. We're gonna take both surveys and we're gonna actually make it better. So then do four questions that are even more specific off the survey you just did. So now all we're doing is taking lemons and making them lemonade, right? So the best things come out of the biggest messes, right? So the best thing that could happen is you get an incredible result where you get a specific direction on, on what, to, what to serve your audience with. And secondly, you also learn the power of not feeling defeated, not feeling like, oh, woe is me, but to actually go, and I'm not saying you feel that way, but there will be some day that you might feel that way um, when you have a big mess and what it looks like to just pick it up and you can do anything again, right? Like you're an entrepreneur, you can create it. You could do whatever you want. It's your company, right? So that's what I would recommend so that we can funnel it into an even more specific four questions and pull that out. Then I would take data from both the surveys and look at it. And I think you'll have a pretty clear understanding on what to do. Does that help? Awesome. Um, okay, we are over the 20 minute mark. We're 21 minutes um, on this show this morning. So I want to just say that thank you for joining me on Coffee with Shanda. Please leave me a comment. Let me know how this uh, how this topic resonated with you. Again, if you really do think that 
um, somebody else would love to hear this and you think that this was a good coffee with Shanda and you want more specifics like this, then please go ahead and share this. That's how I can actually determine um, whether or not you like Freestyle Fridays. If you like Freestyle Fridays, share it. Then I know that you like Freestyle Fridays and I'll keep doing Freestyle Fridays. Other than that, I, I will take time out of my day to come back and go through the comments and answer your questions. So it's a great idea to come back later on in the day and look at some other people's questions and how I answered them. Study, become a massive studier of marketing. And I promise you, if you fall in love with marketing, you'll fall in love with making money. All right, I'll talk to you soon, bye.